of, um, you know, your, your brother's a cop, your dad's a firefighter, your grandmother lives across the street, um, you know, the, the local, you know, school system, everyone kind of knows each other. It's like urban, semi-urban. So it was great. It was fine. Um, and I was actually doing a graphic design degree, which um, I was pretty decent at. Um, I, you know, I always had a penchant for the creative side as well as being technical. Um, early days, I was, you know, re-recording all the DRM copyrighted music off of the legal version of Napster and re-recording it. And, you know, I wasn't quite a programmer, but um, I was, I did have a, like a bent for um, technology. Uh, my dad, you know, uh, gave me a Commodore 64 in my bedroom like very early on. So it was sort of a, a meant to be sort of thing over the long term, I guess. Um, so yeah, I was having a lot of fun doing that and I thought I was pretty good. So other people liked my stuff. But right in the middle of it, bam, like, you know, the whole world is collapsing and you had nothing to do with it or nothing, nothing you weren't involved and, and it's just this big mystery and whoa, what is, what is going on? Uh, and, you know, I was famously of that group um, that was graduating school uh, right as everything was falling apart. Uh, so I'm kind of sitting there like, what is this? What what I I don't have any finance background. I have no programming backgrounds. Um, I didn't ask for this. What what's going on? So I had to go learn quickly um, because I was about to graduate. So there was a documentary that came out um, that was pretty well produced and really caught my attention called Inside Job. Now uh, this basically runs through the entire uh, securitization chain from basically fraudulent uh, mortgages that are signed off and pumped through the system as a way of uh, distributing risk as opposed to having collateral for every um, every single mortgage that you take. In the old days, you know, a small bank would be very stringent about its rules uh, and in, you know, in the evolution of derivatives and, and the housing market, this had changed uh, quite dramatically and came to a head at two, in uh, 2008. So, um, simultaneously as this was happening, uh, the web was evolving rather quickly and uh, I was looking around for design jobs as I was graduating and 99designs, this site, kind of really spelled out what my future was going to look like where people compete in the hopes of actually getting paid for their work. Um, in a market saturated environment like this, uh, I definitely had to change course quickly uh, as almost no one who was graduating was likely to have a job unless they were, you know, um, technically inclined. So uh, I'm sitting there, you know, this is a picture from Mr. Robot. Um, you know, I I just could not believe that this was my my reality. And I watch the show now, and I often feel like I'm living his life. In fact, they actually filmed the show um, in many places around my neighborhood. So I relate um, quite a bit to him. So I, I basically had this background in, you know, some technical, I was like a little, doing a little bit of um, visual basic, you know, doing games and, and Java programming for an AP class in high school. But I was mostly uh, all the way through uh, a design uh, course at Queens College, and we were three years into the iPhone age with no web design degree or, or web design offering at all. So I uh, kind of made this conscious decision to take a hard left turn into, into programming and uh, started to move towards web browsers. Uh, HTML5 um, was now the, the hot item. This is the, um, uh, the, the Steve Jobs famous uh, Adobe Flash banhammer that came down because I was already into you know, the, the creative side and I was getting into programming, interactive stuff, um, but I obviously couldn't do it on a proprietary platform that uh, didn't have the blessing of uh, Lord Almighty Steve Jobs. So I uh, dug in pretty quick and pretty deep, and it seemed very straightforward. It was very hacky, but um, it was it was worthwhile. And you know, I'm running around New York City with you know no computer science degree, trying to learn this as fast as humanly possible. Like my life literally depended on it. Um, so I was hitting maybe, uh, I think, whew, two or three um, uh, programming meetups a week. Um, I particularly gravitated towards um, JavaScript, obviously, web browser, and CSS. I had the design background, and I kind of translated you know, 
not necessarily Photoshop, but Adobe Illustrator, I was designing live in the browser and um, getting acclimated to uh, the terminal and, um, you know, some more um, computer science related, um, uh, like, industry terms and jargon. And uh, all the while, I just kind of really just decided with every ounce of my being that I was going to get myself out of this, that I was not going to be, you know, one of these people down the road saying, what if, or should I have, like, I, I very much um, just went for it uh, directly with a, like a very, very conscious effort, like white knuckling it the whole way. Um, so yeah, you could see that I just bought every JavaScript book that I had and I went to every meetup I could find and just basically gave myself a computer science degree, you know, the hard way, um, which uh, I guess, you know, uh, over the long term, it, it pays off because, you know, you can have a lot of theory in, in the background and, and use some of the frameworks that exist, but um, I, I know it at a pretty low level um, and, and can dive into uh, code in a way that I never expected that I, I would be able to. Um, so, yes, uh, due to the 2008 um, crisis uh, and my graduation around that time and getting more into programming, uh, I had read about Anonymous, I had heard about them, I had kind of just touched, you know, Tor a little bit, uh, wasn't too familiar with how to, like, really make myself Anonymous, but I was more into the, you know, the financial system is collapsing around me, and I don't know if I'll be able, be able to ever actually um, uh, uh, hold these people accountable, but um, something has to give. So I literally went there day one of Occupy Wall Street, uh, and it was an interesting experience, but one that did not leave me with a, a feeling of hope that, you know, marching around on the streets while um, gets a lot of attention uh, is is not a real solution. Pointing fingers, um, you know, wasn't gonna actually get me anywhere. I, I I'm fighting through this in in very objective, measurable terms, and I very quickly kind of made an about face out of that um, that movement and went back to learning programming as fast and as hard as I could. Um, so in my search, I came across Bitcoin, of course. Um, I had actually seen the 2011 video, uh, that little animated video where they, they talk about not needing a, a central bank or a government, and it didn't quite click. I, I, I sort of understood it, but uh, the, the, the grand vision hadn't really quite got, uh, hadn't really um, permeated uh, my, my thoughts, and uh, I wasn't yet really um, a programmer. I was more of like, a design developer working at ad, um, advertising agencies and fashion um, uh, um, uh, startups and 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 you know uh, a lot of the typical New York verticals um, that you know are uh, endemic to to um, to the city. So this guy actually was at the Occupy Wall Street um, um, uh, protest, and I was one of four guys wearing anonymous masks. And if you look at any of the pictures from that day, and you go back and Google, the only one you'll ever see of me is the one I just showed you. Because as they started marching, I just I, I saw the whole thing, you know, end to end, you know, the whole unraveling of the movements in a very just it like hit me like a flash, and I just walked away immediately. So um, in my search, continuing. Uh, the 2014 March uh, Inside Bitcoin conference uh, had arrived, and uh, this was about six months following uh, the big price spike. Um, you know when it hits twelve hundred dollars, so it captured the attention the attention of Wall Street and uh, people that were already in it and, and building these you know very sophisticated mining um, operations. Uh, there, there was a lot of, uh, you know, uh, spoofing and, 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 and um, uh, I don't want to say scandals, what's the word? Um, um, uh, uh, pe people pretending not to be who they are on the internet and propping up businesses on false claims. Um, so I went to it and it was interesting for, you know, like the first day or two. And then one of the last talks that I heard uh, was from Jonathan Mohan of... Um, Bitcoin NYC, 
and he had just recently joined forces with the guys from Ethereum. And uh, I met uh, Vitalik a, a few months later, and I got it signed. But um, something really changed in me when I heard him talking about, you know, something of like a fully automated Uber uh, that can pay for its own services and and be its own organization. You know, the the idea of a distributed autonomous corporation or organization. Uh, this was something that really I had never thought of, considered, never even knew was possible. Um, that's what really bridged the gap for me as a software engineer uh, to, to go from just the finance angle and, you know, protesting, uh, you know, down on Wall Street to, okay, this is really something different. This is Web 3.0. This is a platform. This is, you know, like it may have taken its roots from Bitcoin and use a token of value, but a Merkle-based, you know, uh, cryptographic signing system that's, you know, globally distributed is, you know, a, a, a computing surface for the whole world. And this just totally blew my mind. I, I, I would just stay up till all hours of the night, you know, researching, and, like, there was almost nothing on it. It had just been announced three months prior um, at uh, the Miami Bitcoin conference by, you know, um, from Vitalik. Um, like January 1 or something like that. Um, but I got it right away. Um, I almost had a panic. Like I, like like a shock of lightning right through your system that this is the way it's obviously going to go over the long term. How we get there um, is sort of just an implementation detail at this point. Um, so uh, at, uh, after that, I uh, decided I'm going to really make a move into, into finance. Um, I'm going to go fight the system from within and I'm going to tell them about Bitcoin and I'm going to tell them about Ethereum and I'm going to like turn this boat around. And uh, it, it didn't quite pan out that way. Uh, what I was doing here was um, uh, building a private equity portal because you know you have the, the rise of Kickstarter and Uber and Airbnb and all these companies that no longer IPO. Um, there's very few, if any, that are IPOing anymore. Um, so, you know, Wall Street trying to move in that direction, but they were still trying to, um, you know, be the middleman, the broker dealer, you know, within that transaction. And I'm trying to tell them, I'm like, listen, you know, Bitcoin's just the start. This is, this is, you know, if you want to, you know, ride this wave of, 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 uh, of new technology, uh, you gotta, you know, back off your expectations of what you're, you're, you're going to be able to, um, slice out of, uh. Uh, out of the ecosystem, uh, your value extraction is going to be severely minimized. Um, uh, so they didn't fire me, but they just kind of were, you know, shrugged their shoulders. And uh, I, I knew that that was kind of the, the the moment where I had to go do this either on my own or with the people who already get this. Because there's definitely, you know, someone out there who isn't part of directly the Ethereum Foundation working in Europe but, you know, who's probably building a company. Um, oh, yeah, and here's another one where I was uh, really hell-bent on, you know, trying to change the system. Um, you know, it's a, it's a building that's been there since, you know, 1790-something. Uh, you know, uh, it, it's, it's, uh, it's a long process, and, and uh, having a, a massive ego and, and being so determined, uh, no matter how determined you are, um, doesn't necessarily get you anywhere. But, uh, yeah, my experience was much like Mr. Robot, once again, um, sitting, you know, seeing uh, all the, the, the boys club in the back of, uh, of, uh, of the stock exchange. There is actually a bar up in, uh, on the seventh floor uh, where, you know, the titans of industry used to hang out and smoke cigars and talk, you know, um, all, all the talk of the industry. And this is how awkward that situation was for me. Um, uh, being, you know, completely a fish out of water. Uh, so then I wanted to stay in finance and I moved over to TradeBlock. Um, they were in crypto doing, uh, or basically building uh, Bloomberg uh, for Bitcoin at that time. Um, they had a trading interface. I'm a UI, HTML5 guy. Um, it was really fascinating, um, you know, uh, visualizations of data, um, you know, speed of execution kind of stuff. I was researching um, uh, high-frequency trading and dark pools 
and um, uh, reading up on um, uh, the guys that are uh, trying to fix reg NMS and and you know the and, and mitigating systemic risk like the flash crash that happened in May of 2010 or 11, I want to say. Um, you know, this this was uh, the talk of the town for 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 some time. Uh, Sixty Minutes did a cover uh, cover on it. Um, IEX, that famous um, trading firm that actually uh, slows down or staggers the orders uh, to all the different exchanges in order to have them arrive at the same time, so that um, uh, people can't pick off and 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 skim uh, uh, little bits of the trade. This this you know this is the the nuclear arms race of financial technology that's happening, and. Uh, the decentralization part, although not fast, seemed to uh, be a thing that I was going to gravitate towards. So anyways, I was, uh, I was working here, and although Ethereum hadn't come out, I was, you know, I'm not an Ivy Leaguer. Uh, a lot, they, you know, they had you know, guys from Princeton and Cornell and MIT, um, you know, some of the guys from Booz Allen and, and um, Raytheon. And yeah, I'm, I'm self-taught graphic designer from Queens College, you know, yelling about smart contracts and, and, and you know, the Web 3.0 platform. Um, we eventually agreed to disagree and uh, moved on, uh, which was obviously to my benefit because I'm here talking to all of you now today. And I joined Consensus. Uh, this is our office um, now in Bushwick, uh, Coindesk. Did a, a cover, <laughs> a pretty crazy headline. Uh, you know, consensus is deciding. You know, the future of Ethereum from the hipster haven of Bushwick, Brooklyn. Um, although it is in such a place, uh, and we do help with the ecosystem, I would uh, back off that claim of you know being the purveyors of the entire ecosystem. But uh, we are working on um, pretty fundamental things that need to get solved before, um, the adoption curve really starts to pick up, um, low level stuff like identity, um, token management systems, uh, reputation systems, uh, this is all stuff that you can read about or I can talk about later, but, um, yeah, it's a, it's a fun time, uh, working there for sure. Um, we had Vice come to the office and, uh, we did a hackathon where they actually covered me in this, uh, talking about uh, an equity dis distribution um, uh, um, app where you can decide, you know, you want to spin up a company and you don't need a lawyer anymore. You can actually um, sign an agreement uh, deciding what the split is. So um, imagine sort of a startup in a box uh, kind of um, uh, um, uh, software package for you, like, you know, like Y Combinator and a lot of these um, these uh, incubation um, places. Uh, they they kind of have uh, uh, smoothed out all the edges of um, starting a business for you. Um, the hope was to build something like that on a decentralized uh, platform like Ethereum. So uh, yes, uh, as Ethereum was booting up, this is a fun little story. Um, uh, so there was all these Bitcoin miners that no one was using anymore um, unless you had ASICs. So the whole ecosystem was just flooded with um, these graphics processors that no one was using. So uh, we looked on Craigslist and we found a guy out in uh, East Hampton who had a warehouse uh, full of these things ready to go. Um, all we had to do was just install Geth and... Um, uh, and uh, and and plug them in and find some place where you could find cheap electricity, um, whether that's like a student dorm or um, hopefully one of these like co-op buildings uh, that uh, that you know includes the electricity. Um, but yeah, uh, we loaded up three vans full of these miners. I think we bought about eighteen of them at about six hundred seventy seventy bucks a pop. Um, and we were clearing, like when everyone fired them up um, at the beginning, I think we were, I was pulling down probably at least 200 Ether a day. Uh, so if you were early on the jump and you, uh, you knew how to set these up um, and you were on Skype, like there, I'm, I'm still joined up on all these Skype channels uh, for the early uh, mining, uh, early Ethereum miners, um, you were doing substantially well. Um, so one of them is broken. One of them is still running. Um, I do it more for just a donation to the cause kind of thing. Uh, I don't really rely on the mining. Um, and I'm not a trader either, so I'm 
sort of leaning on my technical prowess to build, um, you know, killer depths, uh, which require a new frame of thinking, um, which I'll get into later. But uh, it's an entirely different beast than you know, uh, just deploying something to Amazon Web Services and and uh, and you know having you know a Facebook you know login click. Um, there, there's it's an entirely new way of thinking about how people manage their identity and their money and their data. Um, so uh, you know, ha have a node up, you know, just just to be you know the good guy. Uh, Yes, and uh, also at the same time, Blythe Masters um, of J.P. Morgan, you know, it's all about the blockchain. She wasn't the first person to discover this, but she was sort of the canary in the coal mine for um, the people who were not already technically inclined. Um, she actually was not an original proponent of smart contracts, but I think secretly behind the curtain, she kind of knew it as well as a bunch of other people. Um, but Ethereum... Uh, hadn't really proved itself yet. So they started um, just using the blockchain only and building against that. At least they had a better security model where you're not using a firewalled system with a soft GUI core that if you can break that you have access to the entire system that you would have to granularly authenticate um, uh, for each step of the way. So if someone gets socially engineered, the damage is localized. Um, I think from an IT perspective and from a financial perspective, it was a no-brainer. Um, and she, I will credit her with uh, shifting the conversation um, to more of a technology focus. Uh, and about two months later, uh, we actually cold-called uh, cold called Microsoft um, uh, saying uh, to the, their finance division saying, hey, listen, like this blockchain thing, it's great, but... You know, what you really need to be looking at is smart contracts. You know, Bitcoin is a calculator, Ethereum is a computer, and a, you know, a fully planetary scale computer. Well, I'm, we're working on, you know, scaling, of course, with proof of stake, but um, the idea is there and you need to jump on this uh, quickly. So they've been trying to compete with Amazon uh, over their cloud services, and this was a no brainer for them, and they jumped in um, almost straight away. Uh, it was pretty crazy going from, you know, little Brooklyn-y startup, you know, with this crazy idea of, like, this new internet to, you know, one of the heaviest of the, the software giants in the world throwing their weight behind you. Um, we have more exciting things coming, um, and I think that uh, Ethereum, whether it's the public net or the private net, um, they're going to really show their support um, uh, for, for the Ethereum ecosystem. And Hyperledger, which... Uh, a lot of you are probably familiar with, um, has now taken a keen interest in the Ethereum virtual machine as well. I don't know if they're going to use the token of value, um, the, the Ether token, but uh, it seems that everyone is set on standardizing uh, against the Ethereum virtual machine. Um, of course, there, there's always the potential of you know some really drastic hard fork upgrade that um, would uh, significantly change um, uh, the development uh, in ecosystem, but as it stands right now, um, that's that's where we're at. Uh, so, uh, given that partnership, I uh, went to London to pitch my accounting system that I'm working on with Dr. Christian Lundquist, uh, PhD in pure mathematics, uh, who was doing quantitative uh, algorithmic analyses at Bloomberg. Um, which is a huge honor to work with him, and he is the chief architect of our soon-to-be identity system called Uports, um, which we are partnering with OneName, uh, um, the, the, the identity uh, Bitcoin blockchain provider, to, to have a, a, a universal can canonical standard across all blockchains for describing a person and all the attributes and relationships that they might have. So... Uh, yeah, this was uh, uh, my second talk ever. Uh, I used to go to those those meetups, and I had my first ever talk was, "Hey, you know, Bitcoin is a thing, and you should look into it." And my second talk ever was, you know, giving this speech in front of you know six hundred people um, in a foreign country uh, uh, with um, <laughs> just only an idea of an application, not a fully functioning one. But what uh, what you're looking at here. Um, is my hope of a 
holy trinity of um, data protocols. XBRL is a, um, a business metadata standard uh, which is required by all of the investment banks uh, in the United States as well as banks overseas um, to report um, their financial data to governments. Um, it's extensible and it, it, it was born out of um, the finance industry, but it can be used for you know, uh, mapping any relationship uh, in a business, whether that's uh, the medical industry or coal mining, uh, whatever it is. Um, so having the semantic, you know, data descriptions uh, of these transactions that are happening is uh, critically important. Um, you can't stuff it all into the blockchain, so you need um, a, a storage mechanism. And given that IPFS and Ethereum are pretty uh, close with each other um, in the development circles, as well as uh, ideologically being a, a Merkle, you know, crypto-based distributed systems. Uh, it seemed like a no-brainer to um, to dump all that metadata on there, and then uh, for every every transaction or every sign-off or um, you know vote in, in a corporate boardroom, you use uh, a blockchain uh, that has the ability to inspect uh, state or application state data. So you can say if this person um, has these rights and has this amount of money then, you know, okay, it's good, it's valid. And this provides um, a better security model for, um, uh, for managing uh, systemic risk in financial markets uh, because the SEC, you know, while well-meaning and, and, and pretty thorough and, and, and capable, uh, doesn't necessarily have the manpower to enforce these rules. So the idea is to build regulatory compliance right into the smart contracts themselves, uh, whether that's on the private you know, side, permissions, um, or that's uh, totally on the public end, or maybe it's a checkpoint, whatever it is, that um, you can't uh, spoof the system and that uh, you can hold people accountable and that you don't have to go chase them down later. So that is my triple entry accounting system that I'm, uh, I've been looking at working on. Uh, and yeah, uh, more press coverage following it, uh, where uh, International Business Times is not particularly my favorite, if I'm being perfectly honest. But um, yeah, uh, it, it, it was, you know, this was a long road for me um, from, you know, not knowing anything about finance to teaching myself finance to devising a scheme to help solve the financial system and then sort of shouting it from the mountaintop uh, of, you know, one of the most sophisticated financial, you know, um, hubs in the world. Uh, it was very much a big deal and I still get calls about it even to this day. There's actually an article I'll show you in just a little bit. Um, then the New York Times covered us. Uh, Comparing um, Ethereum to Bitcoin in more of the financial terms, uh, but you know the cat's mostly out of the bag at this point. Uh, they, they 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 understand the the um, or the at least the, the people who are building these systems understand the fundamental difference. For the average consumer, it is still very much just you know a wallet, uh, you know Bitcoin or Ethereum, but. Uh, if you can see, it might be hard to see, uh, Joe, you know, our founder on the right, uh, he's also one of the co-founders of Ethereum, those postcards that he's standing in front of, those are all the different applications that we're working on. Um, I think we're working on somewhere between 20 and 30, probably, at this point. Uh, consensus is 80 people distributed all over the world, over four different continents, um, building decentralized applications uh, basically as fast as we can. Um, you know, there, there's a lot of conferences and a lot of talks, and you know, consensus is just made up of made up of a, a bunch of people who kind of elected themselves smart enough to help build this new ecosystem. It was like forget about about all the talk. If you just know the tech, then just come work with us, and we'll build the future together. Um, so it's crazy exciting. Um, and uh, a lot of my colleagues now are, are moving around the world and expanding uh, consensus hubs in Japan. Uh, I think Berlin is next, London. Uh, I think there's one in Silicon Valley, or soon to be. 
Um, New York, we are, we're based in New York. Um, and then just the other day, uh, the Winklevoss twins opened up their Ether Exchange, um, and Governor Cuomo actually named us as well. You know, you know, let's, uh, you know, uh, they're trying to like uh, pump up New York as as like a crypto hub, and and they named us in that. We didn't even know about that, but um, super exciting to to have the kind of exposure that we do. Um, I've made trips recently to MIT. Um, who you know they'll they'll throw a, a bunch of students at, at you know some really hard crypto problem. Uh, we have uh, a bunch of interns that we just hired for the summer. Um, yeah, all the all the smartest people um, are 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 rushing to this in a hurry. Um, super exciting. And yeah, I've been doing interviews uh, um, more and more these days. Uh, we actually have a documentary that's um, getting built in house or getting filmed in-house, but also going to be part of a, a larger ecosystem of um, apps and, and, and ways to interact with the blockchain, uh, not unlike, I would say, the Matrix movies, where um, you had the movie, and then you had the game, and, and um, you had like you know, these, these anonymous drops of data on USB sticks. Um, it, it's going to be a, a pretty cool project. Um, uh, singular. It's, I don't know if it's that they have a website yet, but um, it seems uh, seems like it could be you know something very exciting that that could uh, be. I think one of the first legitimate DAOs. Um, there there was the DAO crowd sale just recently, but uh, that was more of a technical framework than it was um, an implementation. Um, so we are we are going to test that out in the creative. Uh, uh, kind of context as, a, as opposed to uh, financial. And I have the privilege of working with Dr. Christian Lundquist, and on the right is Juan Benet of IPFS. So this is just to illustrate, you know, how close we are. We are sort of planning uh, uh, this this future hand in hand together. Um, there, there's, you know, differing opinions. Uh, um, um, Amongst uh, some developers, uh, Swarm, it, it was the first idea of a storage mechanism for Ethereum, which is still under development. Um, but, uh, you know, there, there's, there's different opportunity costs and different visions of, of um, being able to store data in such a distributed fashion. So we're just, you know, trying everything. Um, it's, it's great to have these guys around. Uh, they uh, they are actually invested by Barry Silbert and his digital currency group. Um, so we uh, we are um, uh, excited to be um, trying different things uh, uh, with them because uh, they they now have uh, uh, room to run. They're they're not um, you know a startup that's holding their breath anymore. And uh, yeah, back to the original theme of why I got into blockchain. You know, Goldman Sachs, uh, you know, to pay billions, but, you know, no one's going to jail. Um, I don't know if Goldman, you know, is the company that you would hold accountable. They're quite sophisticated and would be the one shop maybe to uh, steer clear of anything that would be deemed uh, uh, technically illegal. But, um, you know, it stands to reason that uh, we haven't really graduated out of uh, the infrastructure that we have. Um, those in the know do know, and those that don't uh, will know. Um, and this is my story, and this is how I arrived here. Other people have different ideas about how to implement the technology, but um, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a gold rush. Um, we'll, we'll see what happens um, coming soon. Uh, so yeah, I also went to um, uh, the Smart Contracts Blockchain and Data Standards um, um, uh, presentation by XBRL. Uh, I actually was the one that engaged them because I was building the building the accounting system, and I thought to myself, I don't want to rebuild a schema all over again. Uh, there, there's there's got to be something out there that already does this for me, and that was um, FASB, the Financial Accounting Standards Body. Uh, they have an implementation or a taxonomy uh, that sits on top of the XBRL schema. Um, so I went to them and. The Economist article, um, you know, the Bitcoin the, or blockchain, the trust machine, had just come out um, two days before that. And uh, when I raised my hand and said, hey, I'm working on, you know, Ethereum and blockchain, and did you see the article? 
um, all their eyes lit up and they said, okay, well, let's talk. And so we came up with, uh, with this, um, with this little conference. Um, this is an ongoing series of events. I know that Market and ItBit and um, some other um, people in the industry have uh, done presentations. Uh, you should definitely look out for some of those. Um, and uh, of course, uh, you know, XBRL is required by the SEC and the SEC wants to, you know, now see uh, taxonomies that, um, that address blockchains. Uh, it will be an interesting conversation about how you incentivize blockchain native organizations because you know while the data is transparent and you can agree on some standards um, you know adhering to regulatory compliance is can be something of an afterthought um, you know it's it's uh, there, there are reasons why securities securities laws exist but um, in this new kind of environment um, the government is something you could say that they're a little bit sidelined they can help inform it and provide and provide um uh, i would say you know guidance and, and reasons for you know certain things to exist or be implemented but um it will be an interesting future about how they are able to um engage with uh you know this new um totally decentralized uh system every government around the world requires xbrl but, uh, you know, when, when organizations completely detach from the ground, uh, who's to say that, uh, that these people have to listen to anyone? Um, so there are very real um, implications about this that um, I think everyone's aware of but are kind of afraid to address in, 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 in real ways yet. Uh, no one wants to say the wrong thing. So um, it'll take some time. Um, and Hillary, uh, <laughs> oh Hillary, um, yeah, uh, she is. What, regardless of your opinions about um, her track record or anything like that, she kind of represents the last breath of this system. Um, I uh, don't particularly take to any candidate, but um, I think if you know, if one to if one were to analyze all of them. And see which one represents the interests of, uh, you know, the, the 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 people who are the middlemen of transactions. Um, it would be these guys and her. Um, it, it's it's unfortunate that we've arrived at you know such a uh, a, a dramatic um, uh, uh, situation uh, about uh, the current climate of, of of the political process, but. Um, yeah, someone's going to have to stand up and, and, and tell it like it is uh, and, and not promise the world but say, hey, you can literally code your way out of this problem. Uh, you don't have to rely on anyone. You are the solution. Um, that's what I hope to impart to um, anyone who, who, who has uh, an inclination to, 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 to help build uh, this new economy. Um, yeah, and eventually I hope to stand in the middle of Times Square just like uh, Elliot from Mr. Robot and say, I affected the world. I made it safer. I, I did something that, uh, you know, uh, will stand the test of time. Uh, and it's, it's been, you know, my, my life, I, I animate uh, my life in, in my own mind as a movie character. And uh, if you really believe it, uh, you can actually make it happen uh, from, you know, just a graphic design degree to, you know, um, holding a court with the SEC over encrypted financial, financial data standards. Um, it's, it's been a wild ride and uh, I've been very blessed uh, to, to have made it this far. Um, and just today, one of the last things I'll show is um, MarketWatch uh, mentioning us as the number one company to watch uh, for um, the blockchain ecosystem. And if you look, I don't know, if it, it might be hard to see down at the bottom, they actually mentioned the triple entry accounting system that I'm working on. Um, triple entry accounting is uh, not a product in and of itself. It, it was the inspiration for Bitcoin. Um, I would say, you know, uh, tools and 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 platforms and things that you can build against it, assuming this you know, sort of new protocol is where the world will, will turn, um, but uh, not quite a, a product in and of itself. Um, but 
you know, uh, I, I don't mean to disrupt these accounting firms because they actually have done all the, the legwork, you know, for me um, up till now. I would love to partner with them. I'd love to partner with, um, with regulators. I, I want to, I hope to make the system safer. Uh, everyone's talking about breaking up the banks. I don't know if that's possible or, you know, people might have certain opinions about it. I just want to make sure that we never go through another 2008. Uh, that was the catalyst for, for me moving into this entire um, ecosystem, and I hope to deliver something that uh, uh, actually you know, um, adheres to that promise that I made to myself. Uh, so that's really it. Um, I can answer any questions about stuff that's going on at Consensus currently um, or any other uh, general questions that you guys might have. Uh, thank you. Yes. Uh, let me um, let me uh, stop the the screen sharing for a second. How do I do that? Stop screen sharing. Okay. Yep. How you doing? <laughs> I, uh, I I take it that you've seen the uh, the, the balance demo. Yes, so we didn't have Uport set up just yet, and I needed uh, something that would represent a persona. And uh, you know, I just used uh, the, you know uh, the the first guys that came to my mind, and I thought it'd be fun because uh, a lot of the finance guys watch a lot of sports. Um, for those that don't know, the 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 uh, the video uh, that uh, that uh, he was watching um, is the the invoicing feature of uh, Balance where uh, in real time you can uh, send someone um, you know, an invoice for whatever um, you know, work that you've done or outstanding expenses. Uh, they can approve it and pay for it and see it settled instantly um, with all the metadata baked in um, you know, from T3, T5 down to literally T0 or T15 seconds. Um, and actually what I've learned uh, since developing that and presenting it uh, is that uh, governments all around the world actually require invoicing systems as just a means to document the inner workings of, of governments generally, not even financially related. Uh, so the blockchain uh, is just the most ideal platform for um, accountability and, and um, trust vectors in, in you know, systems where we're people are elected or um, promoted, et cetera. Okay. Yes. Um, so, what I've heard internally from the rest of my coworkers at Consensus is that uh, no matter how sophisticated the technology is, uh, you have curators who need to uh, manage the proposals of the DAO, and there's no real infrastructure yet about how you vet these people. So you run into the same problems of, um, you know, campaign finance reform, but like in the crypto ecosystem. Uh, so I applaud them on on raising such, you know, such a such a amount of money. Um, it's the judge, you know, the judge is still out on, or the jury's still out on, um, can they manage the edge cases uh, uh, effectively? Uh, Bitcoin, you know, with the block size debate is sort of the most famous one that they haven't been able to solve. Um, they created the Bitcoin ecosystem. Created, um, I want to say, Dashcoin or some sort of token of value uh, to represent votes uh, to for like corporate governance. Um, at Consensus, we are building uh, 
Boardroom and Wayfund. Wayfund's a, a crowdfunding um, platform, but that would fund um, a, a, a you know a, a you know a, um, a project that could be voted up, uh, voted upon in our boardroom application. Uh, so we're doing it more atomically first and trying to mitigate most of everything we can before we raise any kind of money. Um, you know, the SEC has built securities laws for exactly the kind of thing that the Dow is doing. Uh, there is actually in a month, yeah, I want to say a month, uh, an XBRL um, uh, um, uh, panel on crowdfunding, because there were, there were new laws passed around crowdfunding um, recently, I think, with the JOBS Act, uh, and data standards and blockchain, like all these three things together. So I'm sure that will be top of the list of uh, things to address. Um, it's all very, very early. Um, I can see where you could poke holes in it, but, um, you know, the Ethereum uh, ecosystem hard forked um, uh, with spectacular fashion, like everyone jumped on the new um, code base, and there were absolutely no problems. Um, it, it, having you know Vitalik's or the foundation's guidance um, is great, and it's almost the complete opposite of Bitcoin. Bitcoin, there's you know Satoshi, who you know may or may not be Craig Wright, but there's effectively no governance model. Um, the token is deflationary, and uh, uh, no, no leader, deflationary. And um, I guess the block size thing, but like, but uh, in the opposite realm, you have Ethereum, which has a foundation, has a leader, has um, uh, uh, not necessarily inflationary, but you know, um, uh, a loosely growing sort of ecosystem. And oh yeah, the the, the Turing complete blockchain. Um, so it stands that um, there are more features to work with to mitigate potential edge cases, but um, they haven't all been mapped out yet. That's where we are currently. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so we are in that process of him, the uh, architect of the stack, um, did a fantastic job, but in a limited scope. Like, if you're doing both the front end and um, the Solidity stuff, uh, um, uh, Truffle is a great tool. But, um, yeah, uh, being the JavaScript guy, I'm very hot right now on Webpack and hot module reloading so that you don't have to drive back down to some really deep state of your user interface in order to make some kind of change. Um, so I actually built um, a Solidity Webpack loader so that you can actually write um, Solidity code and it will hot reload with the rest of your application uh, so that you're not um, having to refresh uh, the browser window. Um, but Carl, one of our new hires uh, on his blog, identified that really we need to um, separate these two concerns completely. Like Much like in the industry, you'll have a team that is front-end and that uses Jira or Pivotal Tracker or something to, um, uh, to, to, to look at API endpoints and the description and how you would integrate it. Um, and then you have... Uh, so you have that front-end team, then you have the API team that's like doing all the database work and the endpoints and whether it's Python or Node on, on the back end. Um, the same sort of separation of concern is going to be needed uh, going forward. And Carl's blog basically explains that we need to elevate Solidity, solidity to a first-class citizen language. Uh, at current, um, people are kind of mixing the ecosystems uh, like Mocha and Jasmine and all these JavaScript-based tools um, to interact with the Ethereum RPC sort of like after the fact. Um, there, there's new libraries that are like just getting developed now. I don't even know if they're open source yet. Um, that you can test uh, your Solidity code using Solidity um, and 
you could hopefully, I think this is getting built as well soon, um, you can estimate the gas cost um, like within the test. So not only are you testing the logic, but you could also test um, you know, uh, how much uh, is this going to cost me over some amount of time because maybe your array is growing as you know, your registry of uh, people signed up to your app is growing and you need to do a lookup table um, that can grow um, and you need to be able to measure that. So um, that's why the ecosystem is uh, going to probably, as teams grow, move in more of a separation of concerns um, uh, direction. I don't actually write a lot of uh, smart contract code myself. I spend most of my time on the front end and, um, and advocating for functional reactive programming with um, the React uh, uh, framework that came out of Facebook. Um, and that really... Uh, helps uh, with you know a, a singular um, uh, data flow model as opposed to like six different sources of data coming at you at the same time. Um, so yeah, uh, I would encourage anyone who wants to learn more about um, how to grow a Solidity database uh, to get on the Stack Exchange um, Ethereum uh, um, forum, and uh, I think Reddit has one that's more specific geared. Toward programmers, um, Skype is a great one too. Actually, um, uh, I don't know why uh, Skype uh, became the go-to um, communication platform, uh, but it did. Um, uh, but Gitter, Gitter as well for um, very specific uh, questions that you might have against a certain library is also good. Um, yeah, uh, I encourage anyone to to jump in and and participate in that conversation. Yeah, um, so that's gone through some evolution as well. Um, it seems that when you have a very loose organization, you know, ha having a very strict um, uh, hub and spoke model, uh, you know, like the center is kind of informing all the edges, it doesn't really quite work that way. You know, uh, some uh, spoke, some uh, different um, uh, spokes or apps or teams might have concerns that are cross cutting. Uh, with other dApps. Uh, so your loan platform may require um, a credit score system. Uh, credit scores on the blockchain is a huge thing and uh, I hope to attack that soon. But that um, could be something that you need to talk about with another team who is doing stuff with you know, general accounting or peer-to-peer -peer loans or you know, anything that re would require a credit score. What's the data schema that we need um, to uh, make all this work and work seamlessly together um, so that you can take your Uport wallets uh, around to all these different apps and it just works. Um, so it's more of like these sort of uh, like circles or um, these globs that kind of like form when they need to and then split apart when, when they're no longer needed. Um, we've just spun up uh, mesh services, uh, consensus mesh services that it helps um, uh, funnel or um, uh, optimize the communication across these different teams. Our Slack has something like 400 people in it, um, uh, including the 80 full-time people. So, you know, when you have a, uh, a chat that's just constantly flowing, um, how you document that and how you inform uh, other teams uh, is critically important. Um, so it, it's, it's not as strict as we had originally theorized, but um, we are keeping it organic and loose um, to, to accommodate um, anything that arises. Uh, the more structure that you put in place on the outset is just like software. It's binding. Like you, that is something that you have to, it's an assumption that you have to make and that you have to work with or around. And we didn't want that to uh, be... Uh, 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 you know, uh, a roadblock uh, as we are moving, you know, extremely fast in trying to uh, um, help the ecosystem grow. Mm hmm.
Hmm. Yes. Um, I, I have heard the same issues. Um, I would take, uh, those suggestions from, uh, stack exchange and other, uh, places with a little bit of a grain of salt. Um, these are the hardcore early adopter programmers who are saying, you know, the obvious solution is the one that you have control over is to, you know, download the whole blockchain yourself and spin up a node. Um, I know that it's getting worked on. Um, we, we have the, or we developed the Haskell implementation with the Block Apps team. And uh, we have some people from Microsoft in house working with us um, pretty much every day of the week. Um, I think that it's, Similar to an AWS kind of solution where you just sort of scale laterally, but um, I would not be able to um, tell you the details as I'm mostly focused on the front end. Um, but I would encourage you guys to reach out to uh, the Block Apps team um, and, and ask away because I think uh, Microsoft's just probably too big of an organization for any one person to have a definitive answer. Um, but uh, you know, the more the more answers that they can that they can provide to you, you know, I'm sure Microsoft would be uh, very happy about that. It, it means that there's more users on the system and and more feedback that they can get. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Um, I think that uh, it's um, it is the language itself is easy. I would say it's very JavaScript like. Um, you know, it sort of takes its influence from C and does assume some you know lower level knowledge. Um, like, there's no such thing as like you know a, a, a native byte thirty two you know uh, variable in JavaScript, as far as I remember, unless you're using some sort of like low level compiler. Um, so that, that is a little bit tougher, but um, good thing that Block Apps is here to save the day because they have a command line tool called Block, B-L-O-C, that um, makes it super easy to scaffold out a project and they give you a REST API endpoint that most Python and JavaScript developers are uh, familiar with. So, uh, you can get up and running um, reasonably uh, in, in a relatively easy fashion if you're a non-programmer. Um, if you get into the weeds of private key management and um, identity assist, uh, attestations, and you know, it's it's something of a rabbit hole um, to understand uh, how these cryptographic relationships. Um, point to each other. Like you should read up on, on Merkle trees and stuff. Um, uh, if you're going to go down that road, the problem with um, a lot of uh, programming tutorials these days is they make the assumption of you know a centralized backend data server, and they don't take into account you know mining confirmations and when you actually deploy you know a smart contract onto the eco or onto the platform, um, you know how to manage the life cycle of getting that address back and then assigning that in your application. There's, it's a whole new beast of um, of, of, of development. Um, so if you were to learn anything first, I would say probably learn JavaScript or Python. Just like get you know your uh, your muscle memory up uh, on on general web development knowledge, and then you can start to see where the edge cases are. If you are not a programmer or have no plans to be, um, I would say uh, definitely go to meetups. Meetups is really where the mind share is. I mean, you guys are here right now, right? Um, 
I would encourage, I guess, um, I would say anyone who, who you might know that could influence policy. This is typical of, um, you know, Ivy League institutions or, um, you know, the C-suite of some major corporations. Um, anyone that you might have access to, you should introduce this idea to them because it's an entirely new economic model as well as, you know, a technical one. Um, so people are going to have to adjust um, in these socio-political, economic sort of uh, means. Um, it's, uh, it's, it is winner take all, and I think those who are, are quick to adapt, um, uh, even just becoming a product person uh, at, at, a, at, a, at a startup, um, you know, be the guy in the room who knows about this thing and be the one who can contribute to the thought leadership about where it could go, where it should go, um, as opposed to waiting around for other people to decide it for you. Um, cause you know, as you know, the Reddit R Bitcoin thread has proved, uh, you know, people are incentivized to censor things, to, um, to, to, to push the narrative in certain directions. Um, you gotta be, much more vigilant um, about what you invest your time with. Um, that, that's, I think, something that you should be aware of, uh, whether you're coding or not. Thank you. <laughs> I can finally sleep uh, with my mouth closed. Um, yeah, thank you for thank you for having me. Um, I definitely would like to uh, make my way out there um, at some point soon, and maybe bring some more consensus members to do a deep dive on some of the stuff that we're working on. Uh, particularly, I think around um, uh, energy on the blockchain um, is uh, sort of top of the mind right now with um, climate change being uh, uh, 